Hello, welcome to Octopus Do. I'm Christian Ross. Today's project is going to be a boho style leather wrap bracelet, and it's going to be a different wrap than I've done before, so it should be really interesting. And I've decided to call this the Laverne wrap. And I, I really searched and could not find a name for this particular wrap, and so that's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to see if it catches on. Later on when we get into the project, I'll explain why that's what I'm calling it. But this is what your bracelet should look like when we get through, or this is a variation with Z beads, because of course I love Z beads. So this is what we're going to make. So for this, we're going to need some beads. And of course I use the Z beads in that bracelet I just showed you. For my demonstration, I'm going to use some Druzy beads that are really pretty. These are eight millimeter round Druzy beads that I'll be using. Then in addition to your beads, you're going to need your leather cord. I'm using one and a half millimeter wide leather cord from Leather Cord USA in a natural blue, it's kind of a denim blue. It's really pretty. And I love working with Leather Cord USA. It's very supple, it's really nice, high quality leather. So shout out to my friends there at Leather Cord USA. If the holes in your beads are not big enough for the leather to go through, again, one and a half to two millimeters would have to be a large hole bead for the leather to go through, you can use another material to string your beads on. So for that, I'm going to use a wax cotton cord as my base because that will actually fit through the uh, holes in my bead. So wax cotton cord is there. And finally, I will need to either make a slide bracelet as I did with the Z bracelet, or you can use a button as a clasp. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use a clasp, a button for a clasp. As far as the tools that you're going to need for this project, you will need a good pair of scissors or I'm actually using the Zuron shears for this. Uh, they have a cord cutting pair of shears. I'll leave that information for you in the notes. You're also going to need a pair of tweezers and that's to tie the knots at the end. Um, Really, sometimes your fingers are just a little bit too big. Tweezers are a great way to grab the things that you need. You're also going to need a little bit of glue. I like using a GS Hypo Cement, or this is the Beetle on Bead Stringing Glue. It's pretty much the same thing. Has that nice pinpoint design that lets you put glue exactly where you need it. And I have a little piece of card here that I'm going to use as a backdrop for the glue so I don't glue my table. It's always a good thing. Also, have a ruler. That's gonna come in handy. And the final thing that I'm going to need for this project is something to hold my string and my leather while I work, all the beads and everything like that. And I am actually going to use the uh, Flower Goddess jewel loom and uh, that's going to hold everything up off the table and let me get my hands underneath to do this design. It's a really nice tool. Again, I will leave information for that in the notes. Just so you don't have to uh, sit here and watch me string beads, I've gone ahead and strung some beads on my wax cotton cord. I'm not sure exactly how long of a strand of beads I'm going to need at this point because the leather cord is going to take up some of the space. And so I basically just took all of the beads that I have on that strand, I put half of them on one side, and then I ran the wax cord through my clasp here, my button, just in from the back, across the front, and back down, and then strung the rest of the beads that I have. And I have my two open ends that haven't been tied yet, and 
the entire piece of wax cotton cord is 24 inches. I don't think that I'm going to need that entire length, but that'll give you a good idea of where to start. You can also work off of your spool if that's something that you want to do. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cinch in this button because I want a little bit of a space behind this button before my beading starts. So what I'm going to do is just tie a loop very loosely at the ends because I don't want my beads to come off the end here. So I'm just gonna tie a little bit of a, a knot there and leave that there. And I'm going to push my beads down like so, so that I can gather my button and gather the, the cord there. Now this is something I could have done before I added all of my beads. I should have done before I added all my beads. And because you're watching this on video where you can stop and rewind, then that's something that you can do. But what I'm going to do is just make an overhand knot. So I'm coming down here, pulling this just a little ways. I'm using the button as if it were the end of um, a piece of thread. I'm going to go around my fingers here, go down around that side and up through. But I want to make sure that this knot goes up against my button. Here's where your tweezers come into play. So right here next to my button, I am going to take my tweezers, reach through this loop and grab where I want that to be. Grab right behind the button there. Pinch that together and grab. See? Then I can pull this tighter and kind of slide my knot down as I go. And I'm using my tweezers here to move that knot closer down to the button. There we go. That's going to give me some spacing so that I'm able to put this button through my loop at the other end when it's done to make my clasp because if I have beads right up next to it, it's not gonna go anywhere. Now, I'm going to take the whole thing and put it on the loom. So the easy thing will be to take my button here and I'm going to start beading right after this knot so I can set that right there and I skip two spaces and I put my wax cord down and I can pull that tight. Then I slide down all of my beads and make sure that I've left enough space for them to sit next to each other easily, which they do. All right. And then come down to the other end. Going to untie that really loose knot that I made. There we go. Line everything up. Put two spaces in between here. And then I'm just going to go down to these pegs on the end and I'm wrapping around a few times. One, two. That gives me tension, so I don't have to really tie anything off yet. Just have to wrap this around a couple times. So I've got once and twice. There we go, just wrapped that around a few times. And I can come out here and put a 
clip or a piece of tape or anything that's going to keep that secure for me. I can also tie it if I want to. All right, you might laugh at this, but I actually have this really cool clip right here. It happens to be a broken microphone clip. So I'm just gonna hook that right there and that's gonna hold my thread down for me. It's nice. So I'm gonna slide the beads down a little bit out of the way. Now, on my leather, I have about one and a half to two yards on this. Don't need a whole lot because we're not doing that uh, Cobra link or anything like that where you have to put your leather in the middle and then you have both ends going. We're gonna work with one side and that's going to go around. So we anchor one side. So I'm going to leave about, let me measure. I'm gonna leave a tail to start with. I want about three and a half, four inches. So I'm just going to take that three and a half, four inches and put that on my left side here. And that is just going to start everything. And the way I tie it, the anchor tail end goes up and the rest of my cord is facing down. To make this a little bit tighter, I went ahead and put the end of the button around the teeth here in the back and that's keeping it really nice and tight for me. Now, again, I've anchored one side, then I'll slide my bead up on the left hand side there and my leather cord comes across to my right hand side and I grab the end of my leather cord here. So I'll go across the top, around the back, around the underside there, and back up and pull that tight, but not too tight. I just want to put a little snug because the next thing is it's going to go back over here. I'm going to go ahead and put that right bead down as well because I'm going to use that to measure and keep these the right width apart. So that comes down to this side. So basically on this side, I go down and underneath. And then around the outside and down under through actually this side. Pull that. Now the next step is to repeat this top loop on this side. But I can go ahead and put the next piece down, keep facing correct. Okay, now I come across the top and I'm gonna hold that. Come back up through that space, see, like so. So now this leather cord has gone around. I'm gonna pinch it up, pull it up to that last bead. And I can slide that one up, the next one that is. There we go and around to this side where I go under so I've gone under then I can take end of my leather and go through and cinch that up now here's where I'll stop and tell you why I call this the Laverne knot. <laughs> like I said, I looked this one up online and it's a really pretty one I had seen before, but I have never seen a name for it. And I wasn't sure what to call it other than just another knotted leather bracelet. 
And while I talk, I'll let you see me keep working here. Uh, we're just going to repeat the same pattern from here on. So as I was looking at this and I was making this Z bracelet that you saw, I love that. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. Love the Z. Um, so across. So, as I'm looking at this design, it struck me that this entire process of going down and around and here and around looks like a cursive, a capital cursive letter L. And when I start thinking about a capital cursive letter L, well, I have to tell you, I am old enough to remember watching this show. Tell me if you guys have seen it. Uh, it called Laverne and Shirley. It came on uh, late at night and I stayed up and watched it and it was a lot of fun. And one of the characters, Laverne, always wore this um, cardigan sweater that had the L monogrammed on it and I just thought that was really cute. So that's what I decided to call this. And uh, you know, if you find the proper name for it, by all means, please let me know. But <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun uh, just calling it the Laverne. And like I said before in the intro there, uh, let's see if it catches on. Tell me what you think. It's all about having some fun. So I, again, I'm not pulling really tight because I don't want to uh, break my leather and everything is just going to sit nicely. I know when I take this off, if I've added too many beads, I can always take some off at the end. It's easier to do that than it would be to not have enough and try to add them on and space everything correctly after I've taken it off the loom. So if you're concerned, then err on the side of caution and add extra beads. So I do have five inches worth of beads and I have some extra ones at the end. So I'm going to stop here and we'll look at completing this and we won't need those six. I'm going to show you how to finish off this end now before I take it off the loom. You can actually pull it off if you need to wrap it around your wrist and then put it back on. But the easiest thing to do is to go ahead and finish it off now and then uh, everything will be done when you take it off the loom. So I'm going to do a wrapped slide knot to finish this off just as the decorative element. Now I have my L here that we've seen before. Well, to finish this off, I don't want that loop going that way. I want to make it go the other way. Tell you what, I'm just gonna show you. 
So what I'm going to do here is undo the last loop that I just did. And I'm going to just go around and back up. But instead of coming up inside that uh, space right there, I'm going to come up outside and down so it kind of mirrors the other side like so. So this goes down, wraps around, goes across and wraps down. And now I'm going to pinch these two together and I'm going to wrap this leather to finish this off. So what I do is I'm going to grab my tweezers to hold a space. So I've got some nice thin tweezers here and I'm going to wrap around and just keep the tweezers right there. I'm not holding anything in my tweezers. I'm just using those together to make a space. So I'm going to wrap around three times all the way. So I'll go underneath is one and over top two or is it still one underneath two. That's the continuation of the two there. Underneath three. There we go. That's three. And I guess it's underneath four. So I'm going around three and a half times. Now I'm going to hold this and I'm going to hold this knot with my fingers and pull the tweezers out. But the tweezers have left that space. So that space, I'm taking the end of my leather cord and I'm going back down through that space. And if I need to, I can reach in with the tweezers and grab it. But pull that like so. Now I hold this and pull this tight. And what that does is it makes all of this slide up. I'll flip it over so you can see. It just makes a nice finish to all of this leather wrapping. Like so. Now I'm going to come in here and trim that. So grab my scissors. I want to cut that really kind of close. It's not completely close, just a little bit right there. And then I'm going to take my little octopus card here. So I don't want to get any glue on my loom. Take my bead glue here, my GS Hypo Cement or Beetle on bead stringing glue, and put just a touch so that leather doesn't go anywhere. Now, when that dries, what I'm going to do is trim that off even closer. And something else I can do, you see how when I cut that, you could see the inside of the leather cord and it's a little bit brighter, it doesn't match the blue. I can come in with like a blue marker, like a Sharpie, and just touch the tip of that and that will kind of disguise the end of that cord. All right, now once that's dry, I can come in here and take my bracelet off the loom. So I undo my little clip here and pull this wax cord, unwrap it, take off my extra beads there, put those aside, and then I can come up here to the top and pull this off. And you see how much space is left at the top of this? Well, we're going to make one of those knots like we did at the bottom here. We're going to make that up here and then we're going to cinch this all up and uh, take out the extra space there. So I take my bracelet and I just put the button back on that first longer row here and I'm not going to worry about the number of spaces I have right here. And 
I also don't have to worry about tying off the other end because we're just going to be working up here. So I tied this knot first to kind of anchor everything off. Well, I'm going to take that knot away and use this tail that I left to make another one of those wraps. So I'm going to untie that. And again, as if you need to, use your tweezers to get that out. There we go. So where the knot was, I have it going underneath this wax cord. I actually want it on top, so I'm gonna back that up. And there we go. So I've got this end right here. I go over the top and come back through above it this time. And then, just going to continue around and make that wrap like we did before. I've got my tweezers here. So I'm going to use those to keep a space for the cord to go back down. But I'm going to go underneath. There we go. Go around. That's underneath one, two, three. So hold that, pull out the tweezers, and again, there's that space, the tweezers left. So I can grab the end of my leather cord, push that through. like so, and cinch all of that up. And take that off to do all that cinching as well. So I still have all of this space. Well, here's the thing, is we haven't tied any of this off. The only thing that we have tied or cinched or anything like that has been the leather. We haven't glued our wax cord, so we can pull all of this down. I'll go ahead and do that before I glue and cut this off, this leather piece, but you can do it in whichever order that you like. So because this is all spiraled around, I'm just going to very carefully put this in my hand and hold it so that, that my hand will help it maintain its shape. And I can pull on that wax cord. One side at a time. And that cinches up that extra bit there so that the knot in the wax cord is on top of this wrapped loop, and I'm still all twisted up. So I want to very gently untwist it and give myself some slack. And by pulling it tighter or spreading it out more, you can change the length of your bracelet. going to show you how to make the clasp um, a little bit adjustable. So we've got a curve, make sure everything looks good. There we go. Mm -hmm. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is tie a knot here in my wax cord because that's going to keep this from sliding down any further. I wouldn't be able to pull it down any further. So I'm going to just make a loop like we've been doing so far, pull the end through, both ends through like so. And then I'm going to use the tweezers like I did before. And I'm reaching through this loop and grab where I want the knot to sit, which is right here up against the bracelet knot. So I'm just going to pull. And because my tweezers are there, that tells the knot where to go. And I pull the tweezers out. A little bit of cat hair in there. Yes, the cat boss, Nero, has been working and just give that a little tug and I have a knot. Then I need to look at my button and figure out how much space do I need to get this button in between. So I'm gonna take that button and figure out. I'm gonna take the button, I'm gonna figure out the widest part. You know, I could also do this with a ruler, <laughs> but what fun would that be? All right, so I have my wax cotton cord going across the button at the widest part. So I know I would want a knot right there. So keeping that part pinched, holding that part with my tweezers, I'm going to do that knot again. And I'm keeping my tweezers in the place where I want that knot to land, which is right there. So now I have the opening for my button clasp. So that slides on, and there we go. And if I think I might need that to be a little bit longer, then I can take that same space and make another knot further down. So basically, I can fold this in half and say, hey, if I put a knot right here, that gives me another opening. So I'll take that side, hold it with my tweezers, and make a knot. You know, I am right-handed, okay. Check that out and see if the button goes through. All right, so again, just lay everything out, make sure it doesn't twist on you. Now I'm going to go back and put a little bit of glue there and trim that kind of clean up the end there where I've left this open and I'm going to color that and make sure that's good. And then the extra bit here that I don't need, I can decorate with some dangly beads. So I'm going to take some of those druzies Just slide the bead through. Figure out how far down you want that to dangle and put a knot to keep it from falling off. There we go. And then I can cut that extra off. Maybe a little closer. There we go and do the same on the other side. And cut off the extra. Put 
there you go that's what we end up with and this is the z bracelet that i made using that exact same laverne <laughs> knot um and instead of using a clasp on that i did a slide here that i can pull down tight because it's new so pull that down and that opens up and I'm able to slide it on you see where I use the wax cotton cord with these beads as well and have two dangles here coming off two dangles on this side coming off and then just the leather slide so I can put that on easily and push the knot up and that's a fun dangly bracelet love it these would look really pretty stacked so all i have to do here is put that on and set my wrist down and i have little dangles coming down with that so i like those together look at that so this is a nice, versatile bracelet. It is a great boho look. I've got a little bit of sparkle by using the druzy and a little bit of magic with my Z beads and uh, goes great with my Argentium bangles. So uh, yeah, this is a really cool look. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, give it a like. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and leave me any comments below. I would love to see what you make. Message me on Facebook or post me a link on the Octopus Do page on Facebook and uh, share the pictures that you've made with this project or any of the others. Now you know, go make something. <laughs>